You are listening to the Critical Mass Radio Show, Orange County's business talk show focused on exploring topics of interest to CEOs who are leading middle market companies with your host, Richard Franzi. Hello, this is Rick Franzi, and I am host of Orange County's longest running business talk show. Super excited to be with you here today on the program. Why do you ask? Because we have a great guest. Sanjay Srivastava, who is the CEO of Innova Vascular, is my guest. Sanjay, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. I'm excited to talk to you about your latest incarnation as an entrepreneur. So tell me and tell the audience about the original motivation or maybe the inspiration that you had to start your current venture. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to tell, tell you guys about it. Uh, I work in the medical device industry and specifically in a subset that's cardiovascular interventional medical device. And what that means that we poke a hole at the groin and using blood vessels as pathways, we can travel anywhere from head to toe inside the body and fix problems. Mostly the problems that I deal with are body plumbing problems. And specifically what I do there is I make these tools that enable doctors or interventional cardiologists, interventional radiologists or neurointerventionalists to do uh, their job and enable some of the newer treatments where you don't have to do open surgeries. Instead of doing open surgeries, you can stick a needle at the groin and get your head treated or toe treated or liver treated or heart treated. Um, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun to do that. And, and I've worked for larger companies, Eric, before uh, uh, brands like Medtronic, uh, Johnson & Johnson, and then decided to uh, to do things on my own. So we developed these tools. It's a regulated industry, regulated by the Food and Drug Administration of the United States and similar administrations around the world. Uh, so when we do, when we develop a product, we do the design testing and and, and also the clinical studies as necessary. And then when they get FDA approved, at that point, generally we have partnership with a larger company that takes on our product and they bring it to the market and to the hospitals around the world. So, so that's my business model. For those of us that are entrepreneurs, but aren't entrepreneurs in the medical device space, how long does that take from idea to invention yeah. to approval? Excellent question. In fact, people generally have a notion that it takes much longer, but for medical devices, it's about three to five years, which is not nearly as long as bringing a drug out in the market, which could take 10 to 15 years minimum. So your title here, and people can see it if they're watching the live stream or watching a YouTube video, they don't see it if they're maybe listening to it in a podcast, but it says, Dr. Sanjay, are you what type of doctor are you, Sanjay? So I, I have a doctorate in engineering, and I worked as an engineer uh, creating and developing medical devices all my life and or commercializing, and that's what I do now, essentially, through my own entity or entities. So the products that you're working on in within Innova, are they your inspiration? Are they a collaborative effort with a team? How are you developing the products that you're working on and bringing to market? Yeah, so, so I founded Innova. Um, I have a team of engineers that work with me and we come up with products together with them. But really another important partner in this is the physician base that mm -hmm. uses these products. So they work with us as an advisor. So it's a collective effort, it's a team effort. And we, we, we create the products for, first of all, before we even create the product, it's really about identifying an unmet need. So since we work in this space, we go to hospitals around the country, around the world, we watch the procedures, we know what's being done. That gives us inspiration for what can be done better, what diseases are there that are not being served well. And from there, then we come back and we try to find solutions and create those solutions, file our own patents. So I have 31 issued U.S. patents to my credit uh, uh, doing similar uh, type of things, medical devices for different parts of the body. So it's it's so interesting, and I, I, I don't want to get too technical, but I am curious. When we talked earlier, you made the point, and then again here on the program, Sanjay, you made the point that you, you enter the body, body through the groin area, and then you can literally, with your equipment, travel the body. Can, can you just explain to us in layperson's terms what's unique about the groin area, and 
and what type of work is being done from that point in the rest of the body? Yeah, arteries and or arteries and veins are superficial in medical language, which means they are close to the skin near the groin. So it's easier to uh, to, to 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 access arteries and veins. And as you know, that blood flows throughout the body. So once you have access to an artery or vein and you can see them, see your, your device as well as where these arteries and veins are going under image, what we call image guidance, we can travel using arteries and veins as pathways or highways. We could travel virtually anywhere in the body. And that's how we, uh, we, we, we found this new way of medicine that's called interventional medicine where uh, instead of doing open surgery, you can treat some of the very, very serious devastating diseases that include stroke, for instance. Stroke is a disease of the brain where a piece of cloth goes and sits and blocks uh, an artery uh, in the brain. And as a result, part of brain doesn't get oxygenated blood. And uh, what we, in my past life, I've developed a tool um, that actually pulls that clot out by accessing it from the groin. So you don't need to go through a brain surgery. You, you got your uh, acute ischemic stroke treated. Similarly, other companies are doing uh, in, in the area that are doing transcatheter heart valves where you could place and replace or repair a heart valve by accessing the heart inside of the heart through the groin. Almost everybody knows these days coronary stents that are also accessed through the, generally through the groin, but also since they have become so small that they also access through the arm, through radial, radial artery uh, these days. So, so th this is fascinating to, to imagine. This is where the technology has evolved to, Sanjay. I'm wondering, uh, I think it's obvious, but maybe not. And so I'd like you to put a finer point on it. What's the advantage for a for a medical procedure that is through the groin versus opening the body in a specific area where the, the work needs to be done? Rick, that's an excellent question. Uh, it's minimally invasive. That's the best benefit. So it's 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 almost becoming like going to a dentist that you <laughs> you, 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 you can get your heart treated without having the heart um, open uh, because we could access it. Um, relatively easily without having to, you know, break the ribs and, and then accessing the heart. Same thing without open skull surgery, we can access the, the, the brain and everywhere else in toes and liver and in, in, uh, in kidneys, etc. So minimally invasive, meaning it's less invasive on the body. So patient can recover depending on the complexity of the procedure or part of the body where procedure is being performed. They could be out of the hospital in the same day, the next day, or at most two days from the procedure. So that's and, it. And, and they got their heart valve repaired. They got their uh, lung uh, inside of the lung treated or they got their brain treated. So the domino of positive effects because of that are, I mean, you know, I just imagine as you're kind of comparing and contrasting the two versions of with the way the procedures could be done. I mean, that's that sounds to me like a huge benefit, not only for the patient, but I would assume for the doctor, for the medical establishment, I mean, it just seems like a, a, a better health. way to get things done. Absolutely. Health economics to add to that, potentially mm -hmm. lower risks, lower complication rates in many of these procedures, lower costs. So many ways. Absolutely. Yeah, because you're, you're sparking another thought, which is that not every patient is is perfectly fit. And so the, the less taxing the procedure is on the patient, maybe the better it is even for the patient from that perspective as well. Yeah, is, yeah. Is in fact, true? many of these, absolutely true. In many of these procedures were initially started uh, by doing them on patients who were not eligible for surgery. And then when, uh, mm. you know, the patients who are just not fit enough to receive surgery, so they do this minimally invasive manner before they are proven fully. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking of transcatheter heart valves, which, uh, you know, surgical valves had been around uh, Orange County and specifically Irvine is the hub of it. Uh, they've been around since, uh, you know, a few decades, uh, for, for, for the last few decades. Um, the When transcatheter valves came out, then they weren't fully proven. So first uh, they, were, they were put uh, through a clinical trial for ineligible to surgery patients. Then they were put to, through a trial for high risk to surgery candidates. And today it's become a standard procedure for anyone who needs a valve repaired or replaced uh, aortic valve. They can get it repaired by accessing it uh, in this type of minimally invasive manner. 
Fantastic. This is like yeah. uh, and science. all of this evolved in the last two decades. Up until you know pr prior to the turn of century, there were hardly any interventional procedures. Uh, balloon angioplasty was probably just the one that was just coming up. Right. And and you and I, as we've gotten to know each other, you were helping me to appreciate what a hub for medical device technology Orange County really is. Yeah, so Irvine is the hub specifically for heart valves. Uh, major world's leading heart valve companies uh, or, or heart valve innovations that came from this area. Uh, it's it's a leader in optimal ophthalmological products. It's uh, become a leader in neurovascular space in the last I'd say ten to fifteen years. Mostly emerged that way. And, and uh, many of the cosmetic devices tend to be around here. And not to mention electrophysiology, the largest the market leading company in electrophysiology called Biosense Webster, uh, that's part of J&J, is actually headquartered in Irvine. Okay, so you got a little technical on me. What is that that you just said? <laughs> that the electrophysiology yes. deals with the electrical arrhythmias of the heart, meaning heart mm -hmm. is a pump that pumps blood oxygenated blood to the rest of the body for the most part. And uh, uh, we, it, the pumping action is governed, crudely speaking, through an electrical um, rhythm that's generated within heart um, through, um, for various reasons, including um, diets and, and, and habits and, and genetics, etc. cetera. Uh, Sometimes that rhythm goes um, haywire. Mm. And, and that's that's called arrhythmia. So mm -hmm. there again, there are various methods. You can have pharmacological treatments. You could have surgical treatments. But this particular innovation that I'm referring to, where one of the J&J companies uh, based in Irvine is the market leader, they go with a catheter, again, access through the groin. They go into the heart from right heart to right side of the heart to the left side of the heart, and they burn the inner lining of, uh, of the pulmonary vein, which is where it originates the right near the atrium, and a process called ablation. So this process is called cardiac ablation for, for a disease called atrial fibrillation. Hmm. Uh, and that's become that's become a very common procedure today that people are getting it done and, and their heart is uh, coming back to the rhythm. That's fantastic. And to think that we have a complete ecosystem, don't we, around medical devices and the other devices and, and technologies that you talked about. My experience is those, those become generative to other ideas and you kind of create this this ecosystem and hotbed for ideas, which lead to innovation, which leads to companies, which is fantastic. absolutely that's exciting. OK, Very Sanjay, well this is not your first rodeo, right? In Inova Vascular is not your first time as an entrepreneur. You, you've been a successful entrepreneur previously. That's correct. So I first uh, co-founded a company called Black Swan Vascular, which actually um, has a liquid embolic agent. So what that means, it's a polymer that you inject through the catheter to a targeted location inside the body. And, uh, and, and, and that creates a plug, essentially, wherever you need for undesirable, for reasons that you, if it's an, a big internal leak that you need to plug up, or uh, sometimes there's the endo leak type, there's a sac inside, um, there could be some of the tumors that they want to, that are bleeding, that they want to fill up. And there was no product that was approved for what's called peripheral vascular applications. There was no liquid embolic the agent that was approved. So we embarked on this journey of creating this liquid embolic agent. And I'm glad to inform you that uh, FDA has approved our product. And uh, we uh, had a partnership with a company based in Boston called Certex Medical. And Certex Medical now owns uh, the, the, the product and they are going to commercialize it around the world. Well, congratulations for making a positive impact on yeah on mankind there through your innovation. Thank you. So yeah, and there is a linkage between, so this company that I described actually is used to create clot inside the body where you want to create, but Innova Vascular is in the business of pulling clot out of the body <laughs> where, where you end, end up with a clot that you don't desire. Yeah. And in my past life, I worked for a company which is now part of Medtronic, a company called EV3 Neurovascular, where uh, we created a clot retriever 
for treating acute ischemic stroke. So the phenomena that I described, mm -hmm. that a piece of clot goes in your brain and sits there. Um, so we we were the first uh, stent-based clot retriever. Um, hopefully I'm not getting too technical. Anyway, uh, the, the our clinical study showed upward of 90% revascularization rate, meaning nine, more than 90% of the time we could open the vessel and about two thirds of the patients uh, um, got neurologically better. Wow. Now, prior to our product, just two thirds may not look that attractive, but let me tell you, prior to our product, which came, which was approved in the US in 2012, the standard of care was one third of patients got better with other things that I will describe in a moment. One third got worse and one third stayed the same. So mm -hmm. that was the state of affairs of this devastating disease called acute ischemic stroke. And that was a drug that Genentech had uh, called TPA or uh, two other products that had been approved. They all had very similar neurological outcomes up until that point, when this particular clot retriever that I'm describing called Solitaire, uh, when that was approved um, in, in the US. So a major, major shift from one third of the patients getting better approximately to about two thirds of the patients getting better. And since then, technology has continued to evolve through efforts of many, many entrepreneurs around the world and today outcomes are even much better. This is so fascinating. I uh, I really enjoy listening to you and learning about the positive impact that businesses and from my perspective, entrepreneurs like you, Sanjay, can have um, in this sector. I'm wondering, from your experience, having been in this field for as long as you have, have you found there's like important elements to the success of a company in this industry? Anything that you could share with us that are critical success factors? Yeah, absolutely. What's what's unique of our industry, this actually emanates from physician and scientists slash engineers partnerships. So we don't do this alone. We, we mm. work with the leading thought leaders or physicians who are innovators in their thinking, and they are, uh, they are working with us in partnerships and providing the feedback on what product, how it works. They, they come and test it in our lab and bench testing. They do our testing in animals uh, if needed or as needed. Um, they participate in our clinical trials. So it's an it's a entrepreneur, engineer, physician partnership that's very, very unique uh, in, in my mind. To, to, to the medical device industry that this uh, partnership is vital. I can imagine listening to your clients is valuable. And when your clients are these world-class doctors, that's even more critical to, to the innovations that you seek to have in your field. Uh, have you, do you have a piece of business advice that either you choose to give to other entrepreneurs or that was given to you, Sanjay, that you could share with our audience today? Yeah, absolutely. So the um, the the one particular thing is the teamwork. Teamwork is vital even in smaller companies like ours. That people need to uh, feel energized. They need to feel valued. They need to work together uh, to 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 uh, to to, uh, to move forward. Um, so I think teamwork is what I would uh, I would uh, cite as an example, even in the world of innovation, which often gets deemed as very idea driven and ideation driven and, and someone who has this whole disruptive thing. But really, it comes down to execution. It comes down to timely execution. It comes down to execution within budget for which you need uh, very capable people and more importantly, all those capable people to work together. So I'm very proud of uh, the, 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 the people that, that I work with and, and, and feel fortunate that, that I have the opportunity to work with them. So that's a perfect segue, Sanjay, to my last formal question. And that's, let's, let's look to tomorrow. Can you, it's really not a question, it's a statement, but can you describe your vision for the future of your firm? So I saw this cartoon some time ago, Rick, uh, and, and the cartoon, uh, the, there's a person that's uh, driving in his car and his head is out of the window and the sign says, drive through brain surgery. <laughs> um, and, and, and while it's a cartoon, the point is that could we make these complex medical procedures so easy that it feels like going to the, going to the dentist for, for, for teeth cleaning? and coming home. Really, that's that's what I envision the future to be. Um, getting ailments in your heart, getting ailments in your brain, in your liver, in your lungs, in your kidneys, uh, and, and everywhere else, uh, uh, getting those things repaired and, uh, and, and a, in a 
minimally invasive manner. And uh, with, uh, through the lot of robotics, a lot of uh, artificial intelligence that's being applied in, in the years, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the few, last few years, as well as in the years to come. Uh, and the idea there is that uh, these procedures, instead of being painful, long recovery times, high morbidity and mortality, as we call in some of these procedures where risks are high to the patient um, and so reducing those risks, uh, making these uh, least invasive, as, as, as little invasive as possible, and making recovery times uh, uh, less painful and, and short for the patient. And that I definitely see as the future with uh, collectively with the help of various technologies. It's not just AI or technologies that I'm talking about. Even simple, plain mechanical innovations go a long way together with when they work in, in conjunction with uh, uh, artificial in intelligence, et cetera. I love that. Uh, and that's such a great way to tell the story because it's a memorable cartoon that is humorous, but makes the point in a very vivid fashion. Thank you, Sanjay, for that. I, if someone would like to learn more about you as a professional and an entrepreneur and your firm, where would you suggest they go online? So I do have a LinkedIn profile and we have a Innova web page. There is not that much information there, but it's www.innovavascular.com. And uh, that's a good uh, good pathway to reach me through, through, through clicking a button there. Excellent. I'd like to thank you very much for giving of your time today to share your story, to educate us a bit about your field and to, and just generally be an interesting guest. Sanjay, thank you. Thank you, Rick, for hosting me and um, uh, all the best for your show. Thank you. I'd like to thank our audience, too, because you've been participating here in Orange County's longest running business talk show. Sanjay's episode was episode number 1426 in our catalog. If you are an Orange County entrepreneur and you have a story to tell and you'd like to share it with our audience, then please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Rick, R-I-C, Franzi, F. R-A-N-Z-I. That's my LinkedIn name, and you can find me there. And our website is the same thing, rickfranzi.com. And until the next time we have a chance all to be together, I hope that all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.